Value investing. I'm sure you have heard the term used before to describe how famous investors or firms made their money. But this video will hopefully help you gain a greater understanding on what the value investing really is and how it works. Value investing is an investment strategy that involves picking stocks that appear to be trading for less than their intrinsic value or book value. Value investors actively ferret out stocks that they think the stock market is underestimating. They believe the market overreacts to good and bad news, resulting in stock price movements that do not correspond to a company's long-term fundamentals. The overreaction offers an opportunity to profit by buying stocks at discounted prices on sale. Warren Buffett is probably the best known value investor today, but there are other many, including Benjamin Graham, David Dodd, Charlie Munger, and billionaire hedge fund manager Seth Klarman. The basic concept behind everyday value investing is straightforward. If you know the true value of something, you can save a lot of money when you buy it on sale. Most folks would agree that whether you buy a new TV on sale or at full price, you are getting the same TV with the same screen size and picture quality. Stocks work in a similar manner, meaning the company's stock price can change even when the company's value or valuation has remained the same. Stocks like TVs go through periods of higher and lower demand leading to price fluctuations, but that doesn't change that what you are getting for your money. Just like savvy shoppers would agree that it makes no sense to pay full price for a TV since TVs go on sale several times a year. Savvy value investors believe stocks work the same way. Of course, unlike TVs, stocks won't go on sale at a predictable time of the year, such as Black Friday, and their sale prices won't be advertised. Value investing is the process of doing detective work to find these secret sales on stocks and buy them at a discount compared to how the market values them. In return for buying and holding these value stocks for the long term, investors can be rewarded handsomely. In the stock market, the equivalent of a stock being cheap or discounted is when its shares are undervalued. Value investors hope to profit off shares they receive to be deeply discounted. Investors use various metrics to attempt to find valuations or intrinsic value of a stock. Intrinsic value is a combination of using financial analysis such as studying a company's financial performance, revenue, earnings, cash flow, and profit as well as their fundamental factors, including the company's brand, business model, target market, and competitive advantage. Some metrics used to value a company's stock include price to book, or book value, which measures the value of the company's assets and compares them to the stock price. If the price is lower than the value of the assets, the stock is undervalued assuming the company is not in a financial hardship. Price to earnings, which shows the company's track record for earnings to determine if the stock price is not reflecting all of the company's earnings or is undervalued. Free cash flow, which is the cash generated from a company's revenue or operations after the cost of expenditures have been subtracted. Free cash flow is the cash remaining after expenses have been paid including operating expenses and large purchases called capital expenditures, which is the purchase of assets like equipment or upgrading the manufacturing plant. If a company is generating free cash flows, it will have money left over to invest in the future of the business, pay off debt, pay dividends or reward its shareholders and issue share buybacks. Of course, there are many other metrics used in the analysis, including analyzing debt, equity, sales and revenue growth. After reviewing these metrics, the value investor can decide to purchase shares if the comparative value, the stock's current price, visa visa, its company's intrinsic value, is attractive enough. Margin of safety. Value investors require some room for error in their estimated values, and they often set their own margins of safety. Based on their particular risk tolerance, the margin of safety principle one of the keys to success of value investing is based on the premises that buying stocks at a bargain price give you a better chance at earning a profit later when you sell them. The margin of safety also makes you less likely to lose money if the stock doesn't perform as you expected. Value investors use the same sort of reasoning. If a stock is worth $100 and you buy it for $66, you make a profit of $34. 
simply by waiting for the stock price to reach $100, true value. On top of that, the company might grow and become more valuable, giving you a chance to make even more money. If the stock price rises to $110, you'll make $44 since you only bought the stock on sale. If you had purchased it at its full price of $100, you would only make a $10 profit. Markets are not efficient. Value investors don't believe the efficient market hypothesis, which says that the stock price already takes in all information about a company into account, so their price always reflects their value. Instead, value investors believe that stocks may be over or underpriced for a variety of reasons. For example, a stock might be underpriced because the economy is performing poorly and investors are panicking and selling, as it was the case during the Great Recession. Or, a stock might be overpriced because investors have gotten too excited about an unproven new technology, as it was in the dot-com bubble. Psychological biases can push a stock price up or down based on news such as disappointing or unexpected earnings, announcements, product recalls, and litigations. Stocks may also be undervalued because they trade under the radar, meaning they're inadequately covered by analysts and the media. Value investing requires due diligence and patience. Estimating the true intrinsic value of a stock involves some financial analysis, but also involves a fair amount of subjectivity. Many at times, it can be more of an art than a science. Two different investors can analyze the exact same valuation data on a company and arrive at different decisions. Some investors who look at existing financials don't put much faith in, it. in estimating future growth. Other value investors focus primarily on a company's future growth potential and estimates and estimated cash flows, and some do both. Noted, value investing gurus Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch, who ran Fidelity Investment for several years, are both known for analyzing financial statements and looking at valuations multiples in order to identify cases where the market has mispriced stocks. Despite different approaches, the underlying logic of value investing is to purchase assets for less than what they are currently worth, holding them for long term and profit when they return to intrinsic value or above. It doesn't provide instant gratification. You can't expect to buy a stock for $50 on Tuesday and sell it for $100 on Thursday. Instead, you may have to wait years before your stock investment pays off, and you will occasionally lose money. The good news is that for most investors, long-term capital gains are taxed at a lower rate than short-term investment gains. Like all investing strategies, you must have patience and diligence to stick to your investment philosophy. Some stocks you might want to buy because the fundamentals are sound, but you have to wait to see if it's overpriced. You want to buy a stock that is most attractively priced at the moment, and no stock meets their criteria. You have to sit and wait, and your cash sit in idle until an opportunity arises. Unnoticed and unglamorous stocks. Look beyond what you are hearing in the news. You may find great investment opportunities in undervalued stocks that may not be on people's radar, like small caps or even foreign stocks. Most investors want in on the next big thing, such as technology startups, instead of boring established consumer durable manufacturers. For example, stocks like Meta, formerly Facebook, Apple and Google are more likely to be affected by herd mentality investing than conglomerates like Procter & Gamble or Johnson & Johnson. Value investing strategies. The key to buying an undervalued stock is to do thorough research on the company and make common sense decisions. Value investor Christopher H. Brownie recommends asking if a company is likely to increase its revenue via the following methods. Raising prices on products, increasing sales figures, decreasing expenses, selling off or closing unprofitable divisions. Brownie also suggests studying at a company's competitors to evaluate its future growth prospects, but the answer to all these questions tend to be speculative. Without any real support of numerical data, simply put, there are no quantitative software programs yet available to help achieve these answers, which makes value stock investing somewhat of a grand guessing game. For this reason, Warren Buffett recommends investing only in industries you have personally worked in, or whose consumer goods you are familiar with, like cars, clothes, appliances and food. One thing investors can do is choose the stock of companies that sell high demand products and services. Whilst it's difficult to predict when innovation 
new products will capture market share. It's easy to gauge how long a company has been in business and study how it's adapted to challenges over time. Examples of value investment. Value investors seek to profit from market overreactions that usually come from a release of quarterly earnings reports. As a historical real example, on May the 4th, 2016, Fitbit released its Q1 2016 earning report and saw a sharp decline in its after-hour tradings. After the flurry was over, the company lost nearly 90% of its value. However, with large decreases in the company's share price are not uncommon after a release of its earnings report. Fitbit not only met analyst expectations for the quarter, but even increased its guidance for 2016. This is all average investors needed to jump on Fitbit, selling off enough shares to cause the price to decline. However, a value investor looks at the fundamentals of Fitbit and understands its undervalued security, poised potential increase in the future. What is an example of value investing? Common sense and fundamental analysis underlie many of the principles of value investing. The margin of safety, which is the discount that a stock trades at compared to its intrinsic value, is one leading principle. Fundamental metrics, such as price to earnings ratio, or for example, illustrate a company's earnings in relation to their price. A value investor may invest in a company with a low PE ratio because it provides one barometer for determining if the company is undervalued or overvalued. What are common value investing metrics? Along with analyzing a company's price to earnings ratio, which can illustrate how expensive a company is in relation to its earnings, common metrics include the price to book ratio, which compares a company's share price to its book value per share. Importantly, this highlights the difference between a company's book value and its market value. A book value of one would indicate that the company's market value is trading at its book value. Free cash flow is another, which shows the cash that a company has on hand after expenses and capital expenditure are accounted for. Finally, the debt to equity ratio looks at the extent to which a company's assets are financed by debt. Who is Mr. Market? First coined by Benjamin Graham, Mr. Market represents a hypothetical investor that is prone to sharp mood swings of fear, apathy, and euphoria. Mr. Market represents the consequences of emotionally reacting to the stock market rather than rationally or with fundamental analysis. As an archetype for the behavior, Mr. Market speaks to the price fluctuations inherited by the market and the emotions that can influence these on extreme scales, such as greed and fear. The bottom line, value investing is a long-term strategy. Warren Buffett, for example, buys stocks with the intention of holding them for almost indefinitely. He once said, I never attempt to make money on the stock market. I buy an assumption that they would close the market the next day and not reopen it for five years. You will probably want to sell your stocks when it comes to time to make a major purchase or retire. But holding on a variety of stocks and maintaining a long-term outlook, you can sell your stocks only when their price exceeds their fair market value and the price you paid for them. Hopefully this helped explain value investing, its history and how it works. Leave your thoughts on the investment strategy in the comments and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to Business Ventures for more business and finance related content.